Come on, we don't want to be late. I groaned before getting up from my bed. Mom had made me pack my things last night because we were going to meet my dad for a mini vacation. I haven't seen my dad in about two months and I look forward to seeing him. I just didn't think I'd be getting up this early. Rose, don't be lazy, it's just eight. Breakfast is in the kitchen. I strolled down, rubbing sleep from my eyes. I was 18 and the last child of three children. My sisters were happily married and only come home during the holidays. In a matter of time, I'll be out of here. Once college resumed, that would be my ticket to freeing adulthood. I ate my pancakes and shook my head in amusement at my mom as she moved our things to the car. I was the miniature version of my mom. We had the same dirty blonde hair and pale skin. My mom ordered me to get ready and I had to hurry so as to not risk her wrath. It was snowing lightly and it looked perfect for a drive as long as the snow didn't fall any heavier. We hit the road. We wore our coats because the cold was getting intense a little. I picked up my book and lost myself in the world of fantasy that Sarah made knew how to create. Mom was in good spirits and I understood why. She was going to spend time with her husband after a long time. Their marriage was the definition of the perfect marriage. I've not seen any couple stay in love with each other the way my parents were. Even though they were old, they were still in love. They made me believe that love was real because they were perfect examples of what a couple should be. Mom smiled at me and I shook my head in amusement. She was tapping along to the upbeat tune playing on the radio. We should be with my dad in two hours. The upbeat tune got interrupted by an announcement from the radio. They claimed that there would be heavy snowfall in about four hours and everyone should stay indoors. We glanced at each other and then shrugged it off. We should be there and safe before then. So we continued, and we just rode in silence. Oh no, what's going on? My mom asked. Cars in front of us were slowing down. There was a blockage on the road and there seemed to be people around the blockage. Suddenly there was a violent scuffle just ahead. The men around the blockage forcefully opened the doors and, and pulled out who was inside. My mom reversed and drove into the forest by the side of the road at a breakneck speed. My heart was in my throat and I was shaking a little. I couldn't believe that our car almost got taken from us. The snow started to fall rapidly and it seemed like the warning we dismissed earlier was coming to pass around us. My mom continued to drive through the snow, thankfully that we were safe. The progress we made was little, but at least we were warm. At this point, we could hardly see anything and I was starting to get apprehensive. All the stories I've heard about snowstorms began to flash through my mind. I mean, we just encountered gunmen not long ago. Then, all of a sudden, the car gutted to a stop. My mom was muttering no as she tried to start the car. I sighed loudly. This was the worst thing to have happened to us. Your dad will know what to do. Mom reached over for her phone and cursed when she saw that there was no phone service. This meant we were completely stranded. It looked a bit dangerous for us to remain there and I suggested that we should find someone and seek help. Mom said that we have to sleep in the car till morning before we could get help because of those people we ran away from at first. I was too tired to argue. My mom screamed as my door got opened. I sat there, stunned, unable to make a sound as a pair of hands reached in to grab me. My instincts kicked in and I lunged to the side so that the hands missed me. We hadn't heard him approach. Mom unbuckled her seatbelt and quickly got out. I was still fumbling with mine. The hands reached for me again. So fast I barely moved before one of the hands covered my mouth while the other found the upper part of my arm and yanked. My yell was muffled beneath his palm. Tears slid from my eyes and in those few seconds I wondered if I was going to die. I was pulled out of the car into the cold. My attacker was a large man and I struggled against him as he crushed me into himself. He suddenly lurched forward. Mom was hitting him from behind with a log of wood. <clears throat> she hit him at the back of the head with a loud scream and he groaned as he dropped me. My mom yelled at me to run and I obeyed, glancing back to make sure she was following me. She raised the wood again and he caught it in his hand before it connected with his face. My mom dropped it like it made hot coal and hurried after me. Hearing his heavy, labored breathing behind us spurred us on. We were small and moved through the trees faster than he could, considering the fact that he was just injured. We half hopped, half jogged to the main road. There were still cars passing by so we knew that we were safe. After limping and walking for about 15 minutes, we saw a motel next to a gas station. Mom had to drop her Rolex watch since all of our money was still in the car. The owner accepted it as a form of payment with a glint in his eyes. Dad had given her that watch on their last wedding anniversary. We slept like the dead that night. When morning came, we called Dad and explained everything that went down. 
He rushed to pick us up. The police helped us with the car stuck in the woods and we were advised to get loads of rest after that traumatic night. I was still a bit shell-shocked and it felt like I was kind of disconnected from myself. It felt like yesterday's events happened to a different person. Suffice to say, our vacation got canceled and dad came home with us instead. It wasn't the vacation that we were hoping for, but at least we were all safe together. Did you enjoy the first story? If you did, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Oh, if you want your broccoli to be served fresh, then don't forget to hit the bell icon. Keep munching. The snow was as beautiful as ever. It looked white as usual. Safe to say, it was pure in its own sense. The winter period would always be my favorite. The family comes around and everyone gets to enjoy one another. My family was the type that cherished family time a lot, and growing up in that kind of environment, I was naturally the kind of person who lived to create moments that we would cherish forever, and things that would remind us of the future. This time, my family had games day and night planned. There were many games to play with, and my family decided that every game that was ever created in physical form would not go untouched, and so we had to sort out all of the games to different days. The first day started normally. My brother came back from work complaining that he was so tired, but, but I couldn't relate as I was only almost a university graduate. I didn't even know what to do to work to earn a living, but as the saying goes, tomorrow would sort itself. And that was the rule that was pushing me forward, even if it felt really hard. The first game we started with was Monopoly. The rule was very simple. Just try to get as rich as you could be. Dad was business-minded, and we all thought he was going to win, but things took an interesting turn, and the fact that I was writing this with my whole family in the hospital just says the summary of all that happened. Things started quite well, with everyone in a good mood, and even my mom, who was rarely ever smiling, had a wide smile plastered on her face that day. At first, my dad had the winning hand, which made us all annoyed at the fact that knowing how to handle money was just his thing, but after an hour, Things took a drastic turn and Caleb, my brother, became the richest. It didn't seem like a problem to any of us, but if only the inner part of human beings could be read, we would have known that we were walking into the lion's den, with the lion around, but with the face of a cute bunny. Almost suddenly, Dad threw his chair in the air, and when I looked up, he was furious and his eyes were red like he really needed someone he could tear apart anytime soon. Dad, Caleb said, and I called the same name, Dad. Oh, you people think you can just take all of this from me and just make me poor like I have no sense or what? My dad said. Mom, I thought these episodes were over. That's what the doctor said, isn't it? My brother said. What were they talking about? My dad used to have episodes that made him flare up? I looked at mom and she just had her head pressed down and when she looked up, tears were at the brim of her eyes. And that was more than enough confirmation for me that what my brother said was right. My dad used to be an angry person? He used to have episodes? There were so many questions. How come I didn't know about it for almost 25 years? How long ago did they do treatment? And why was he back to how he used to be? My dad rushed to the kitchen and when he came back, he had a very sharp knife with him. One of the new ones that mom recently bought. He pointed it at my mother and smiled at her. A smile that was creepy and which I could not define. Then he looked away from my mom and looked over at my brother That made me scared, coupled with the fact that I could not tell what he was thinking or why he was moving towards my brother with determination in his eyes. A horrible and creepy determination, and the knife that was with him was pointed towards my brother, just a few inches away from him. My brother didn't try to move or run from the fact that a crazy father was pointing at a knife at him and that he could do anything crazy. Before I could finish processing my thoughts, my brother fell to the ground and blood spilled from his stomach. His skin suddenly went pale. I looked at my dad to see if I was going to find at least one hint of remorse in his eyes, but it was not there. Instead, he walked towards my mom with the same horrible and creepy determination, and before I knew it, my mom's body dropped to the floor too. They were both breathing, but who knew for how long? I looked up at my father again, and this time, he looked confused, and just when he looked at me, I saw tears in his eyes, but I was not moved by that. What happened here? Did I lose it again? Princess, please, please tell me I didn't do this, please, he said, dropping the knife that was with him, and looked around again to confirm that he really was seeing his family members on the floor. The question is, what did happen here? I can see that you are really crazy, and you have no idea 
and you have no iota of respect for your family members to the point that you stab them all in the name of anger issues. Even if your head was not in the right place, didn't your eyes see their faces before you stabbed them? Hmm? I replied him. His eyes moved back to how they were before, red and anger written all over it. He walked towards me this time, and I was hoping that he was not going to do whatever he had on his mind. My head moved and ran from him, but my legs could not run. I was glued to a spot. A part of me had this hope that he was my father and that he couldn't do it, but a part of me told me to run as fast as I could away from him. I trusted him instead and I just stood there, hoping that the look on his face would change soon. Instead, when he got to me, he pointed the knife at my belly and he looked me dead in the eyes. I closed my eyes and said my last prayers, but when I opened them, I saw his own body on the floor instead with his blood around him. He stabbed himself. Without thinking, I yelled, enough to make the neighbors run in, and when they did, I couldn't tell what happened after that, because when the first person ran in, I took the same knife my dad used and stabbed myself. Everything went black, and I said my last prayers.